Hello friends, if you're part of the family and you're part of um, just our community here that we have at Simple Faith, welcome back. But if you're new here and you are checking uh, my channel out for the first time, welcome um, and thank you so much for stopping by. So for today's uh, study, we're going to continue in the New City Catechism book. And we're going to be doing hopefully, let's see, question 42 and question 43. Um, so right about now we have about 10 questions left and then we're going to finish this book. So I'm going to be thinking through um, just what our next study is going to be or if we just want to just read the Bible or study. Um, yeah, I'll be praying and I'll, I'll be seeing what the Lord would want me to do uh, next with you guys. So super excited. Um, right before, oh, before I jump uh, into the study, I wanted to recommend this book that I've been doing. Um, if you follow me on social media, I, I let you guys know that I was studying, I, I was starting it in the month of July, and I've been taking my sweet time. <laughs> That's kind of how I do life. I have three kids, and it's kind of busy here in the house, and I homeschool. So um, typically, when I do studies, and they're like, oh, this should you should be done in like 10 weeks, or, you know however amount of days that are set out. It's literally probably just like double that. <laughs> That's how long it takes me to finish a study. And I'm okay with that because I have no rush. I like taking my sweet time. Um, but this has been such a blessing. I got this book at um, a convention that it went to, uh, was it last month? Yeah. And they gave it to us free. I went to a minister's wife's luncheon uh, with Jen Wilkin, who's the author of that book. And we received this cute little package uh, with tons of cool stuff. And in there were a lot of resources. And one of the resources or book was one of these, one it was this study. So it's called God of Deliverance. And it's a study of the book of Exodus chapters one through 18 by Jen Wilkin. Um, and it has been such an amazing uh, book to go through. I'm literally only in week two uh, and uh, there's a video or yeah just a le lesson to go along with this that you do have to purchase I went ahead and purchased the audio just because they're a little um, they were less than like the video format um, and I heard the first one today and I was so blessed I was so filled and uh, knowing that in the study um, just as author's gonna walk through walk through um, the book of Exodus and just teach you how to you know yes I um, what is a document, not documentaries, commentaries are really good, but how do you really push yourself to think through scripture? And because we have the Holy Spirit, we are able to dive into it and find these amazing treasures and learn to develop these tools that will help you, um, yes, how to interpret any book in the Bible. Um, and Exodus is one that it's like, I feel like any book in the Old Testament, I feel like it's a challenge for me because I'm like, <gasps> am I that smart? Am I like that? But I have the Holy Spirit with me. And if I take my time and I'm diligent and I pray and I take the time to work at it, then I will um, understand a lot more than if I don't. So anyways, I want to recommend that book to you guys. But let's jump right into it because it's already been three minutes of this video and you guys probably want to hear about this. Um, okay, so question 42 is... How is the word of God to be read and heard? Okay. Again, how is the word of God, meaning the Bible, the scriptures, to be read and heard? And for this, we're going to go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, where it says, All scripture, meaning all the word of God, the Bible, is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Um, obviously, God is perfect. God is omniscient. God is all powerful, and you have this perfect being. But what is so amazing about Him is that He wants us to know Him. He wants to be known. So He has revealed Himself in uh, His Word. He has breathed it out, meaning He spoke it. He revealed it to those earthly authors who wrote it, right? Which, which we know it's like an array of like, you know, kings and uh, queens and um, fishermen and shepherds and everyday folk and, re you know, um, religious leaders and uh, doctors, etc. Um, tax collectors, sinners, they're all sinners, but uh, there was a written array of earthly authors that were inspired by God through the Holy Spirit to write his word. But we know and we are convinced that this is the word of God for so many reasons. I think I might have a video as to why we know the word of God is the word of God. I'm gonna check it out. If I do, I'll put it below. Um, 
And so we know that this is revealed from God. And so for that reason, it is our truth. It is what we follow, right? Again, it says it is profitable for teaching, right? To teach us, instruct us. Like I've been reading through the book of uh, Psalm, well, Psalm 19, which is the longest chapter in, in, uh, in the Bible. And in there, it talks about the, God's statues, God's rules, God's commandments, uh, his law. And the reason why the psalmist embraces it and needs it and s sees it as profitable for life, where we find a refuge, where we, you know, have our source of hope and where we delight in following is because it gives us understanding that is, uh, that makes us wiser than the wisest person in the world. People who are wise in their own in their own eyes, in their own um, in their own mind, or in wise in the things of the world, they are foolish compared to you know even the new the new cre uh, sorry the new Christian who is just learning about the things of the Lord because God's wisdom is found in His commandments. So if we understand those, then we are already starting to know and to understand the truth of life. And God, and that's what God's commandments and His Bible does. It gives us understanding. It makes us more wiser than Albert Einstein, who, you know, obviously was so smart, but if he didn't know the Lord, then he was foolish, right? The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So having this, we have the Word of God that it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correcting, for us looking at our lives and our hearts and our sin and knowing what is the way to go. How should we repent? What is the proper way that we are to live to um, display a life that's obedient to the Lord? So correction and for training in righteousness, right? If I want to be righteous, um, like the Bible says, be holy as I am holy. If my goal is to be like Christ and God is molding me, then I need to be training in righteousness, right? So God's word, where we have his law, reading it, meditating it, is training our minds, our hearts, our soul to be obedient to God. And it says that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Um, God does not demand something that he doesn't give us already. If he says, be holy as I am holy, we are able to kill sin. We are able to live a life of righteousness before the Lord. If we cling to him, if we cling to Christ, and when we do out of obedience to him, we live a life that's, you know, that's wise, that follows him, that is uh, humble, that pleases the Lord. Okay. So looking at his word and meditating on it, meditating in it and Jen Wilkin was saying in her study meditate to the point where you're it's just soaked in you know like it's not enough to just read something and say okay I get it read it enough times that it really does soak into your mind okay so again that's 2 Timothy 3 16 to 17 and so the answer right how is the word of God to be read and heard with diligence preparation and prayer right so we go to school and we are diligent to understand and learn more of our craft or whatever it is career that we are going through like for example i'm i went to school for nursing and i took my time to understand the concepts i don't remember more than half of them now it's been such a long time but for you to get prepared and equipped for it right if you're gonna go to the doctor you're not gonna be you're not gonna want to be seen by a doctor who just kind of did the minimum, the bare minimum though. You want a good, well experienced, educated doctor. It was the same thing. If we want to be diligent and growing in righteousness, we have to be prepared, preparing ourselves for it. So we study it with diligence, with preparation, with prayer, so that we may accept it with faith, store it in our hearts and practice it in our lives. So not only are we accepting it, we are storing it in our hearts, right? In our minds. Um, and we are practicing it in our lives. So it doesn't just stay in our mind and our heart, but we have to, how in the world um, are we living it out the gospel and the word of God practically every single day? So that is question 42. Question 43 is, what are the sacraments or or ordinances ordinances um and in this we can see romans 6 4 and the sacraments and, and the ordinances are um things right and that are the us church we do together as a body of christ that the lord has um has commanded us to do and what are those right so we look at romans 6 4 it says we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too walk in newness of life. So now when we come to Christ in this new life, 
there's things that God commands us to do, to follow, to show that we have come from darkness to light, that we are now, you know, his servants, his children. And the, those are the sacraments. So the sacraments are the ordinances given by God and instituted by Christ, namely baptism and the Lord's prayer. So those are the two, right? Baptism, when we baptize one another or when we come to Christ, we decide to follow Christ. We are baptized, not for salvation. The Bible is very clear about that. We do not get saved by being baptism because that's, uh, that's a work that we do. We don't get saved by works. We get saved by our faith and um, the faith that we put in Christ Jesus, right? So we baptize as a command from the Lord to be able to let our community know, hey, listen, I am here. I am this. I'm part of this family. Hold me accountable. Walk with me, etc. So baptism and the Lord's prayer. And the Lord's prayer is, I mean, sorry, the Lord's supper. And it's what we do um, to remember the sacrifice that Christ did, a time where we can reflect our hearts and our minds. Um, again, to readjust our thinking into uh, keeping that in mind and seeing how that affects our lives, right? Um, so baptism and the Lord's prayer are visible signs and seals that we are bound together as a community of faith by his death and resurrection. By our use of them, the Holy Spirit more fully declares and seals the promises of the gospel to us. And we do that when we come together as uh, the body of Christ, as we come together um, in worship, corporate worship, when we gather as a church. Um, I know a lot of people think that when we meet together in church is to evangelize and to bring non-believers. Non-believers are more than welcome to come and to sit and take in. But the reason why we are coming together is because we need to come together. We are the body. So we need to come praise the Lord together, have corporate worship, learn about the about the scriptures, be exhorted by our pastors, have fellowship that, you know, the fact that we need each other, we need that. So our service is a service of worship. It should be tailored around worshiping the Lord primarily. If an unbeliever wants to come and hears the gospel, absolutely they're welcome to come. And we are to be doing the evangelism throughout the week to bring them to, hey, come to church, but because you should know the, 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 the gospel already by me, by me telling you, and the service just confirms that. And they're able to see it and say, yes, I want to be a part of that um, uh, in seeing that. But again, the services are not primarily for the non-believer. The corporate worship on Sunday, that gathering is for the believer and our service should be centered around that and around the Lord. So, all right, guys, and when we come together as a church, we do the sacraments, which is baptism, and we do the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Supper. I keep saying the Lord's Prayer. Okay, um, so hopefully Wednesday we'll do the next, the following two uh, questions. Again, the information about this book is right below. Okay, if you guys want to check it out and where to purchase it, again, is the New City Catechism. And the one that I told you guys about is called The God of Deliverance, um, Study of Exodus, Chapters 1 through 18 by Jen Wilkin. Okay, all right, guys, that's about it. Stay tuned for a few messages from myself. Love you all, and I will see you on my next video. Bye. Hello guys. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch my videos. I take the time and effort to edit them, to film them. So it means the world to me that you guys stop by to check them out. So thank you. I have a few messages to share with you guys. They won't take long at all. I promise. So number one is I accept prayer requests. So if you are going through something or you just are in need of prayer, go ahead and contact me. You can either leave a message below or you can email me. Um, I am on Facebook, but I don't check my uh, Facebook Messenger that often, um, but I do my Instagram. So you can either uh, contact me through Instagram, email, or comment below, and I will pray for you. Me and my family will be praying for you. Number two, if you are on social media, especially on Instagram, you should totally be following me. And the reason why is because I post a lot more content over there than I do actually here on YouTube. I share with you guys pictures of my family, especially in the Insta stories. I share recipes, uh, everyday life, and just a lot more content. So if you are on there and also on Facebook, go ahead and follow me. And number three, um, if you have not subscribed yet to my channel, go ahead and do so now and hit that notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. We have so much fun here and we would love to have you join our family. I post uh, Mondays or I do my best to post um, Bible studies or Bible 
content Mondays and Wednesdays. And then Fridays is for my girls out there. I do um, makeup reviews, hauls. I do uh, so many fun things, recipes, uh, videos with my kids. So we have a lot of fun and we would love to have you on board. All right, guys, well, that's about it. Short and sweet. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in as well. Don't forget our hope in life and death is in Christ Jesus. Love you all, and I will see you on my next video. Bye.